Thank you, Heather. I'm so excited to be here with Dariush today to share Tiny Organics' journey and how our vision is coming to fruition through our collaboration with Tufts School of Nutrition and Policy. Sophia and I co-founded Tiny because we are on a mission to fundamentally change the way an entire generation of children experiences food by transforming their relationship to nutrition through vegetable forward first bites in order to promote developmental benefits that last a lifetime. At Tiny, we are inspired by European baby-led weaning, which means that babies can feed themselves our whole organic food, know when they're full, and become independent thinkers and eaters for life. Tiny is 100% organic, no added salt, no added sugar, and all vegan. 80 of Tiny's 100 first flavors are savory as well. We just launched in January of this year and have since announced our partnership with Michelle Obama's Partnerships for a Healthier America. We've done millions in sales in our first 12 months, solidified our nationwide retail launch for next year, and most importantly, have helped thousands of little ones and time-starved parents <laughs> across the nation fall in love with vegetables from their very first bites. We are building from a deep belief that we can shape the palates of the next generation to prefer veggies and savory foods from the very start so that children can grow up to be adults free of chronic diseases and obesity and flourish into the healthiest versions of themselves. Our vision was crystallized when we collaborated with Tufts School of Nutrition, Science and Policy, and I'm so thrilled to introduce tiny scientific advisor, Dariush. Dariush Masafarian is a cardiologist and dean at the Tufts Friedman School of Nutrition, Science, and Policy and professor of medicine at Tufts Medical School. Dr. Masafarian has authored more than 400 scientific publications on dietary priorities for obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular diseases, and on evidence-based policy approaches and innovations to reduce these burdens in the U.S. and globally. He has served in numerous advisory roles, including for the U.S. and Canadian governments, the American Heart Association, World Health Organization, and United Nations. He is known as a thought leader in the food as medicine movement, and Reuters has named him as one of the world's most influential scientific minds. Wow, incredible. He is also Tiny's scientific advisor since almost day one, over two years ago now, and I'm so honored to have been recently appointed as a co-chair of his Early Innovators Group. Group, as well as serving on the Tufts Innovation Council alongside brands such as Kind, Unilever, Nestle, General Mills, and more, which Dariush has brought together through his wide-reaching impact. Tiny Organics collaborated with Tufts for a year prior to launching in market this past January, and we are beyond humbled to have your insights and leadership, Dari, as we've built out our 100 flavor programmatic approach to childhood development. I am always so inspired and moved to action every time you discuss holistic nutrition, so I am so, so excited to hear from you today. At Tiny, we're working together to develop your child's gut health from the very first bites. I'd love it if you could share some of your insights and work on the food compass that you've built and a little bit about why nutrition is more important than ever to our survival and for the next generation. Thank you, Dari. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here and, and to speak with you. And I think, you know, you can't uh, uh, underemphasize what you said, that nutrition is, is critical to our survival. It's critical to our survival as a, as, as a, as a race, and it's critical to survival of, of the planet. It, we really face a global nutrition crisis. Uh, poor nutrition is the leading cause of poor health in the United States. It's the leading cause of poor health on the planet. And most of that is due to chronic diseases, obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, cancers, but also many things we're just starting to scratch the surface of, uh, you know, better understanding of gut health, immune health, uh, you know, resilience to pandemics like COVID-19, uh, a baby's brain development and, and performance in school, productivity, uh, you know, so many uh, aspects of our, of our body's health is related to nutrition. You know, in addition to the direct human impact, uh, this is causing enormous economic impact. Our healthcare costs are spiraling out of control. Uh, and this is also leading to dramatic inequities um, by race, by geography, by income. Uh, and this is challenging uh, businesses in their rising healthcare premiums. It's challenging federal government and state budgets. And if, as if all that weren't enough, it's challenging national security. The number one medical reason that otherwise qualified young men and women can't qualify for the military is obesity. And so 71% uh, of young Americans can't qualify for the military due, due to a range of, range of causes. So this is challenging national security. And finally, 
this is a huge issue for sustainability, uh, climate change, water, soil, uh, the oceans, um, you know, it, it, it's incredible. So all of that together, we really truly face a global nutrition crisis. And if you think just about the United States, there's more of us now who are sick than are healthy. So half of Americans, half of American adults have diabetes or prediabetes. A three in four are overweight or obese and more than half of some form of cardiovascular disease. And where better to start to address this than in children in the earliest days of life with understanding how to eat a healthy diet. And, and it's it, the, the healthcare costs related to these diseases are so mind-numbingly large. They're swamping every other priority, leading to a lot of the partisan bickering and political divide we see in Washington. 50 years ago, healthcare spending was 5% of the federal budget and 5% of the average state budget. It's now almost 30% of the federal budget and 30% of the average state budget. That is swallowing up every other priority and it's really not sustainable. And this is also relevant to COVID-19. COVID-19 is of course, formally a respiratory virus, but the more we learn about it, it's, it's actually just as much a vascular virus infecting the, the blood vessels of the body and also an inflammatory virus. And this is what leads to the significant drop in oxygenation. This is what leads to kidney damage, to heart damage in young people, to this long hauler syndrome, to stroke. And what's, what's crucial, why that's so important for nutrition is that the major conditions that lead to higher risk of, of poor outcomes from COVID-19 are diabetes, hypertension, and obesity, all diet-related diseases that lead to vascular and inflammatory dysfunction. So nutrition, as if it weren't important enough, is probably one of the central pillars to address, you know, sort of population resilience and national resilience to, to COVID-19. And the public gets this, but they're also incredibly confused. They don't know where to turn. They need to have companies they trust, messages they trust to be able to, to feed their families a, a healthy diet. And the science has exploded. Uh, there's much, much more science about understanding nutrition in the last 20 years than in the last, uh, you know, previous 50 years combined. But that science hasn't yet been translated to policymakers, to business, to government. And I'm convinced that business has to be a part of the solution, right? We have to be able to both give carrots and sticks for businesses to, to do the right thing, to give them the, the sound evidence, incredible science, they need to do the right thing. And so at Tufts, we've launched the Food and Nutrition Innovation Institute. Tiny Organics is, is one of our members, over 50 members uh, across the food space, insurance, advocacy and nonprofit groups, or members, investment companies. Uh, and the goal is to really have science-based, mission-oriented innovation and entrepreneurship in the food system to advance health, equity, and sustainability. That's true profits. Those companies will financially do better. They'll do better by people. They'll do better by, by uh, equity, and they'll do better for the earth. And I think that that there's you know many, many key messages that, that we, we want to share, and we're sharing with businesses. I mean, one of them is that focusing on single nutrients and trying to, to say that, well, because my product is low fat or low, low cholesterol or even low calorie, it's healthy. <clears throat> That's not grounded in science, right? We need to move toward more whole food based, um, uh, healthy ingredient foods that are, that are minimally processed uh, and, and particularly rich in fruits and vegetables. And, you know, if I had to give kind of one take home message of what we've learned is that there are healthy foods that should be encouraged, foods like fruits and nuts and beans and vegetables and whole grains and yogurt and fish and plant oils. There's foods that should be eaten in moderation, like, you know, eggs and, and chicken uh, and, and unprocessed red meats and butter and cheese uh, and milk. And there's foods that should really be avoided. And, and the top of the list of the foods to be avoided is uh, foods that are really rich in refined starch and sugar and sodium and, and highly processed. We need to move away from those foods and toward healthy whole foods. Now, how do we do this? You know, what, what are we working on at, at Tufts in our research and our advocacy? I mean, first, food is medicine to really try to integrate nutrition and food into our, our concept of health. Healthcare is, is again, you know, almost a, a fifth of our, our GDP. It's a, almost a third of our federal budget. And yet we don't address food and nutrition in our healthcare system. So that's obviously, you know, a, a major challenge. And there's ways to, ways to address this through healthy produce prescription programs medical education for nutrition providers, medically tailored meals. We're working with congressional leaders uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in the federal government and, and others to try to advance food as nutrition, food as medicine, excuse me. But the second key thing is innovation and entrepreneurship. And so we really need to advance, uh, you know, business innovation and, and reward companies for doing the right thing. And 
among the different ways to do that, tax policy, other things, you know, one of them is ESG, giving uh, investors, whether it's large institutional investors or major funds or, or individual investors, giving them clear, sound metrics to guide investment decisions. Uh, in ESG, right now, there's pretty good metrics for, you know, carbon, uh, and there's pretty good metrics for governance, but the S, social, there's not great metrics for nutrition and health. And so we've developed the Food Compass, which is a rating system to rate individual foods and products, mixed meals, restaurant meals, and also a company's overall portfolio and rate the healthfulness of their products and how they're contributing or hurting population health. And we're working with several partners now uh, to try to, to uh, extend and validate this. And we hope that this will be launched in, in early next year as a way to help you know, promote um, uh, good investing. We need to really you know, uh, uh, reward the companies. There's a lot of other things we need to do to advance innovation and entrepreneurship. We need a national moonshot for science. Uh, we need to have the federal government invest in that. Uh, many, many other other things we, we should do. And, and I think lastly, we need to just have related to all of this, uh, you know, I'll end by saying you know, it's time for true cost accounting for food. We have to not think about food as just a source of calories and a race to the bottom for the cheapest, most shelf stable calories that will just, you know, fill, fill our tummies and, and make us sick. We have to have true cost accounting where we actually value not just socially and culturally, but economically through sound policy and the market value healthy foods uh, because the societal and economic cost of unhealthy eating is, is devastating. Thank you so, so much, Jerry, for sharing. I know that through our work together with Tiny, we made a difference for my son Sebastian's life, who has been eating Tiny almost every day for the past two years and actually prefers vegetables. But we can do this for an entire generation, right? And I think that's what, there's so much at stake here. We've already helped thousands of other children um, who enjoy Tiny across the nation, love vegetables as well. Um, and I just, I'm so filled with hope um, about our, our mission together. Thank you so much for sharing your deep knowledge and expertise with us today. And thank you to Human Ventures for elevating Tiny and believing in us from the very beginning. Thanks.